Born ready. You were born ready. Uh, we are now recording. Welcome, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce Isabel Mercier Turcotte, a brand strategist and business growth catalyst. Isabel is the co-founder of Leap Zone Strategies and host of LeapTV.com. One of the most inspirational branding, marketing, and customer experience keynote speakers, Isabel is a no-nonsense dynamo, born to catapult passionate entrepreneurs and thought leaders to build businesses and brands designed to make life better. As one of North America's top business influencers, best-selling author, two times TEDx speaker with over two and a half million views, and TV show host, Isabel brings 25 years of branding, marketing, and customer experience expertise. She has worked with more than 500 companies, including some influential and iconic brands like a w Ruby's Footwear, Earl's Restaurants, IMAX Corporation, and HSBC Investments, just to name a few. Isabel teaches how to grow businesses and brands that are designed to thrive in any economy by becoming and remaining the first, the best, or the only. Isabel Mercier Turcotte, take it away. Hey. An applause in uh, sign language is this for, uh, <laughs> for making noise uh, digitally. Thank you. Um, happy to be here. Thank you, Roger, for uh, the invitation. You know, we're, we're on um, definitely different times right now. Things are shifting, things are changing. Um, and crisis can totally be a certain dose of danger and a huge dose of opportunity. It's all about finding new cheese. It's about really learning to pivot from survival and having a survival mindset and survival actions um, to reinvent ourselves during COVID-19. But you know what? Remove the word during COVID-19 because this has to happen all the time. We need to reinvent ourselves all the time. And crisis is sometimes actually the only way that massive change can happen on this planet. You know, there's so many things that never get done until there's a massive crisis. Regulations, bureaucracy, you know, and there's a lot that would take years and years and years to change, but then something happens that is often not so fun, yet quite productive on many levels. So what creates fast change? Fast change gets created with one word, necessity. COVID-19 right now is that necessity, right? The necessity that's needed for breaking down the unhealthy status quo, the bureaucracy, the, so that, that we can create intelligent change. And yes, that process can suck. It can actually hurt. And sometimes it's actually not fun for anyone. Everyone at one point or another through COVID-19, their life, their business is affected somehow. But there's so much positive that's occurring through this. Medical regulations are being relaxed. Immunization and detection efforts are much faster. Insurance companies are providing coverage now remotely when you know, they, would, they would need signatures before live at the office. Now suddenly, people are able to do it digitally. Mortgage industry, same thing. For years and years and years, we had to be there physically signing it. And now they're finally relaxing that and making sure that we can still continue to do what we need to do and buy homes and get mortgages without having to go to a physical office. The educational system, you know, archaic as it's been, magically has been turning through digital and pivoting to continue delivering the genius in different ways. Now people can work from home, whereas organizations before never, some of them never even thought that that was going to be possible. And now suddenly, not only is it possible, but you can't undo, once you've tasted 
and you are effective at working from home, you can't undo that. <laughs> so these companies uh, are gonna actually have to comply with more flexibility, more flexibility in the workplace. So COVID-19 has already created dramatic change for the better and, um, and it's hurting for a lot of companies. What I'm gonna share today is not about diminishing the, the hurt and the, the challenge, but it's about helping finding new cheese, finding new ways of moving forward. Um, lots of changes are gonna occur for the business world and entrepreneurs. In fact, right now, if you're an employee, it's gonna be much more difficult. If you're laid off, it's gonna be much more difficult to get back on your feet, finding a new job, finding uh, new ways to actually make money. As entrepreneurs, we are very fortunate that we are definitely more in charge of what we can and cannot do, what we are willing to do or not willing to do. And there will be massive return uh, in the future, massive returns in the future. That is if you choose to elevate and reinvent, reinvent and pivot rather than just survive. So as, as um, uh, um, Roger said at the beginning, he, he talked a little bit about um, what I've created and what we've done at LeapZone in my career. Um, I'm, I'm known as the Simon Cal of branding. And yes, I choose to view this as a compliment. Uh, because, you know, this guy really um, can spot and elevate and amplify talent. I'm just a little bit more fashionable and a lot more friendly than him. But in the past 25 years, I've had the uh, opportunity and fortune uh, to work really hard and really smart to create two seven-figure businesses. Um, I've produced and hosted uh, a branding online TV show called Lead TV. I worked with uh, amazing small business heroes and great big iconic companies. I won Entrepreneurs of the Year and uh, have been voted uh, North America's business uh, influencer. And uh, of course, a couple of TEDx talks. Uh, who here on the, on the call have seen one or two of my TEDx talks by show of hand? Thank you. I've, I've got a little bit more work to do here. Awesome. <laughs> um, and so this all sounds great and it sounds like, oh yeah, that's, you know, lots, lots got done. Like most of you here on the call, we're all successful in what we do. Um, but let me tell you, you know, through the 25 years, I have gone through my fair share of reinvention and reposition to become and always remain the first, the best, or the only. Everything is in the positioning. Everything. And um, I've also repositioned and uh, pivoted many companies, many entrepreneurs, large and small. And reinventing and repositioning is fun for me, but not always fun for everyone because it brings a lot of unease. It brings a lot of uh, insecurities and, you know, that can be scary. Uh, nobody likes to be in some uncertain, uncertain world let alone be uncertain with the business through going through the uncertainty of what's happening right now. There's lots of blind spots through this process. But one thing is for sure is it's incredibly rewarding. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it leads to something much better. So on the agenda tonight is we're going to talk about, you know, where does fear come from? Where does it come from and how to leverage it to your advantage? We're going to talk about the one question. Well, we're going to talk about a few questions, but the one question that you absolutely need to answer and answer clearly in order to find new cheese. And I'll explain what that means. And we're going to learn to eliminate the trivial many and amplify the vital few so that you can turn danger in massive opportunity because there is massive opportunity right now. Some of you are thriving right now in business as a result of your industry or as a result of what you provide and what you offer. And some like restaurants, you know, some industries are suffering more than others. But everyone can pivot and everyone can shift. Now, what do I mean by crisis is danger plus opportunity? You know, in every problem, therein lies the next solution. 
The same token is true in every solution. Therein lies the next problem. So let's look at the past, right? Historically for a minute. In the past 150 years, there's been many huge changes from crisis and unexpected events that have created new normals and have shaped a brand new reality for our world, for what we know today. The computer killed the typewriters. Smartphone is killing landlines and any other type of lines. iPods, iPads killed the Walkman and the portable CD player is definitely dead, right? Video streaming killed rental stores. The list goes on. The internet alone has brought in billions of dollars and has actually killed many businesses along the way. Every time a Starbucks gets into a, an area or a neighborhood, it's huge potential to kill little mop, mom and pop shops and mom and pop cafe, cafes, should they not be willing to pivot. So every one of those inventions has created massive business growth and for some, and of course death for others or massive difficulty for others. Why is that? Right? Why are some companies born or growing exponentially during times of chaos and times of change while others die? Because the cheese has been moved. The cheese is moving. Who the hell moved my cheese? So people right now, a lot of people are going, hey, there used to be a pile of cheese here. Where, where is that pile of cheese now? Who moved my cheese? This, by the way, is a great book. Um, a, gr a great book uh, that's called literally Who Moved My Cheese? And it's a book around understanding change and leveraging it to create something even better. Because, you know, change happens. Shift happens. You can either fret about losing the cheese or you can venture to find new sources of cheese, possibly even better cheese. As I said, change happens and it's what we do with the cheese, what we do with finding new cheese that actually makes the biggest difference. And sometimes the cheese moves a few inches and sometimes the cheese moves kilometers and thousands of kilometers away. The key is to always be on your toes so that you can be faster at finding new cheese and experiencing looking for new cheese. So let's talk about change a little bit because by understanding change, we can understand fear better. And then we'll talk about fear and then we'll talk about ways to actually pivot. So change happens, we know this, the, key, the cheese will keep bloody moving. The cheese has moved for hundreds and thousands of years, whether it's through a crisis or not a crisis. It's gonna keep on moving. Anticipating that move, you know, always be on your toes to anticipate the move, to get ready because the cheese will move. There's one thing that's absolutely certain on this planet is that change will happen. It's how ready and how willing we are to pivot during that change that makes the big difference. The key is to also monitor the change always finding ways to, to continue with cheese is to always smelling the cheese and kind of feeling, hmm, am I feeling a change? Am I smelling a change coming along? Whether it's called COVID-19, no one could have seen this one coming. But there's a lot of pivoting and by monitoring that we can actually uh, be aware of. Adapting quickly to change. See, again, we can choose to go, oh, there used to be cheese here, what do we do? I'm gonna wait until the cheese come back, there used to be cheese, or we can adapt, right? We can go, well, oh, let's quickly let go of the idea that we had cheese here and go, hmm, how, what can I do? How can I change? How can I elevate to create something that will be more of service and that will create more impact? And of course, enjoying that change. Change is something that most people don't like. It's scary. It brings uncertainty. And we don't know by letting go of what we used to have, by being up in the air, we don't always know what, where we're going to land and what's going to happen. And sometimes the devil we know 
is better than the, the devil we don't know. That's probably not the expression, but we'll say it is. <laughs> so staying in the state of curiosity to savor the adventure to get new cheese, because nothing has been ever created out of fear or out of, uh, um, yeah, out of, out of fretting. Things get created, things get pivoted by curiosity and by looking at, hmm, how can I make life better for me and for others? How can I make this moment more valuable for me and for others? So that is to simplify change and to actually go, okay, the cheap COVID-19 has completely removed cheese for some people and has created new piles of cheese for other people. So now let's talk about fear, because understanding where fear comes from helps in understanding what we can do to utilize and leverage fear to our advantage. So fear comes from the fear of loss, three categories, right? Loss, we've all experienced loss in our lives before. We've lost people, people around us have lost their life, money, comfort, material, We've all gone through losing something, someone important in our life. And yet, we're all here. And I'm willing to bet that we're stronger than before. And being proactive versus reactive is actually what makes the biggest difference here. Mitigating fear by being proactive on a few things that are working really well or have the potential to work really well. So being proactive, it works against the fear of loss. The second category is the fear of struggle. No one likes to struggle. I don't like to struggle. Nobody likes to struggle. Nobody wakes up one morning and goes, today, I wanna struggle. No, it sucks. But we've all been through many struggles in our life. And again, came out of it stronger. And I think for me, the key has been for my business and for my clients, the key has been to honor that struggle instead of avoiding it. Avoidance leads absolutely nowhere other than uh, in a cave filled with absolutely no cheese anymore. So going through the door of confusion always brings clarity and rewards often is actually way better than what it was before. What comes beyond the door of confusion and the struggle often is way better. The third category is the fear of outcome. You know, we're all scared of outcomes. We don't like, nobody likes bad outcomes. I don't like bad outcomes. Nobody likes that, it sucks. Yet, we spend a lot of time, most of our time and energy, talking about or anticipating or worrying about bad outcomes. I know a thing or two about worry. I have a TED talk about worry with, uh, with Roger. And one of the biggest worry I had in preparing for this TED talk was to forget my script. I knew the script inside and out. I focused so much on worrying about losing my place in my script. What happened? That's correct. I lost my place in the script. And then Roger in the wings was laughing. And I thought, well, I guess my next line won't come from there. <laughs> it won't come from stage right. But the key here to bust this is this time right now, the COVID time, you know, the first couple of weeks, people are, they don't quite know what to expect. You know, lots of people kind of watched Netflix movies and just, you know, relaxed a little bit with family. But now this is extending. So this is not a time right now to curl up in a fetus position or wait for you know, what's gonna happen next. Or worse, this is not the time to be catastrophizing the outcome. This is a time to engage, explore, be curious, and do our very best to reinvent how we are of service, how we do create impact, and visualize that as a great outcome. Michael Phelps is a great example. You know, he's the most decorated gold medalist in swimming. And his practices were never just about the practice. His ritual was exactly the same. And he always visualized winning, never the worry of not winning, never being behind of a second. Every day of his many practices, thousands of practices were always the same. So when he got to the Olympics, to him, 
it was just the same practice as usual. Normalcy, bringing normalcy in times like this actually makes, makes a big difference. Now, we know that change happens. We know that, law, that fear comes from loss, struggle, or um, outcome, fear of the outcome. Now, the number one question that's being asked right now that everybody is asking themselves is this question. How am I going to get through this? The problem with this question is that it's leading, right, to thinking from a place of fear instead of thinking from a place of curiosity. A better question when you want to pivot and be of more value for your clients, a better question to ask is, what am I going to change to get through this and possibly 10x my business through this time? What am I willing to do? What am I willing to explore? What am I willing to create to better serve my clients, to better serve my community, to better serve my industry, so that I can find new sources of cheese, so I can find better tasting cheese. So focusing on growing exponentially gets our minds to think bigger, to think smarter. It gets us to focus on the macro versus the micro because we can get lost in the weeds. We can get lost in the little detail here and the little detail there and the little problem here and the little problem there. So in other words, what is, who is this situation calling you to become? Choosing our emotional tone as entrepreneurs and as leaders is absolutely key. So you can choose to add to the internal or external panic, or you can choose to adopt the role model mindset, stay calm, stay centered, and stay focused on what truly matters. Participate in the drama or grow by facing it calmly and doing the reinvention work that's actually required to find new cheese. So said differently, are you playing this game to win or are you playing not to lose? Very big difference. There's a big difference in mindset, in attitude, in actions. You know, when someone play is playing not to lose, well, that person's most likely going to make poor decisions. Most of the time, nearsighted bad decisions. Um, whereas someone who's playing to win will tend to make decisions that are founded on facts, on trends, and on really focusing on what truly matters now, but also what truly matters and how this now decision will affect the short term and the longer future. When someone is playing to win, that someone is able to approach basically any situation with curiosity, and the desire to reinvent themselves to add more value, add more uh, impact, right? Create more impact. So someone that plays to win is also able to discern the vital few from the trivial many. We live in the world of trivial many. Our days are filled with, trivi with trivial many. Most of our actions are driven by trivial many. And when you're led by trivial many, you're experiencing a drain of energy because your energy and resources of time, skills, money are spread in absolute all directions, right? As you see here as my little doodle. Whereas focusing on the vital few harnesses and amplifies your resources of time, skills, money towards one direction or fewer direction which means that you can actually be laser focused and go further than if your energy uh, was uh, spread in all angle. And I'm not sharing anything here that's like, oh, groundbreaking. We all know this. But the key is to go from common sense to common practice. It doesn't do anything for us to know something when we don't actually act and be proactive at moving the needle forward um, regarding that particular thing, right? So. So trivial many versus vital few is called essentialism. And essentialism is the art of less but better. 
uh, another great book that uh, you can, that I highly recommend. It's one of my top five ultimate favorite books by Greg McCowan. Now I was raised as an essentialist as a kid. Now at the time, this was not pleasant. This was not popular. Uh, my mom wasn't a very popular person in my life at the time. Today, I'm very, very, very grateful. But my mom has always been about less but better. And although I, I truly, I, I found her extremely annoying and very difficult to, uh, to be with, man, as a kid, I learned some vital skills about prioritization and about ensuring that I'm spending my time and my energy on what matters and what can be amplified versus diluting my energy left, right, and center. So let's go a, a little bit, and, and that, that essentialism has been truly, truly pivotal for me in my life, but also for my clients' lives. So I wanna dig, dig deeper a little bit around what is an essentialist versus a non-essentialist, and what are the differences? Because we all have, we both, we all here, we all have a little essentialist and a little non-essentialism in us. But it's, it's really harnessing that power that can actually make the biggest difference in our businesses. So the non-essentialist thinks all things to all people versus the essentialist that thinks less but better. So in the all things to all people, we think I have to, it's all important, and how can I fit it all in? I am positive we've all felt this here on this call because that's, that's the truth. We all go through at some point, oh my God, it's all, it feels all urgent and important. But when you start reducing the trivial many and focusing on the vital few, you make decision based on I choose to, only a few things really matter, and what are the trade-offs? When I was a kid and I wanted to do either A or B, I had to pitch it to my mom. I had to do a whole big presentation and I had to position my ideas and I had to talk about the pros, the cons, and most importantly, the trade-offs. I had to actually tell her, because a trade-off is like a shit sandwich. Which shit sandwich, that's hard to say for a French girl, which shit sandwich are you willing to deal with? Because with every decision, good or bad, there are trade-offs. And it's which trade-offs are you more willing and, and able to deal with that makes the biggest difference. So that's how the non-essentialist thinks and the essentialist think, uh, thinks. Now let's look at what the non-essentialist does. They do the undisciplined pursuit of more. And the essentialist is the disciplined pursuit of less. What does that mean? Well, the non-essentialist reacts about what's pressing today, says yes way too often, we've all been a culprit of doing that, and often executes last minute versus going from reacting to pausing and being able to discern what actually matters. Because in pivoting a business, you need to focus on what matters. Otherwise, it, you'll never have the right pivot. Saying no to everything. My mom was a pro at that. She said no to everything until I convinced her otherwise and proved to her that that was a vital few uh, as opposed to a trivial many. And you know, the, the essentialist removes obstacles to be able to execute easier and better and faster as opposed to uh, having energy everywhere. And let's look at what the non-essentialist gets. Um, versus the essentialist. So the non-essentialist lives a life of dis dissatisfaction. And we all have a part of our life that is through dissatisfaction. And the essentialist lives a life that actually matters. So takes on too much, feels out of control, and feels overwhelmed versus chooses carefully to do great work, feels in control, and experiences joy in the journey. Now, the key is to learn to eliminate your trivial many and amplify your vital few. But that's a lot, a heck of a lot easier said than done. You know, how, how do we do that? So I have an equation that I've been using for a long time 
one of my mentors shared that with me over 20 years ago. And when I have too many trivial manys and I need to really look at the vital few and decipher between the trivial many and the, and the vital few, I look at this, I look at these terms. And so the terms stand for, so that's my equation, literally, like I will pass, this is my funnel. I will pass my decision, my priorities through this funnel. So at the end, I can actually go, hmm, that is part of a vital few versus that is not part of a vital few. So T stands for time. E stands for energy, resources, money, and sanity. So my time, my energy, my resources, my money, and my sanity has to be less than, less than ROI plus FV plus PD plus L. Isn't that a great equation? There, I think we're done. I think we're good. Do we like the equation? <laughs> Let's actually talk about what that means. So my time, my energy, my resources, my money, my sanity has to be less than my return on investment, has to be less than my future, the future value of this particular opportunity, plus the personal or professional development, plus my lifestyle. So if I have a, a priority or something that I think is a good opportunity or priority, then I need to look, I need, this needs to pass the test of this. And if, for example, I was asked to speak around the world and travel 365 days a year, that would, that would impede my time. It would give me a lot of energy because I love that. Um, it would require less resources than certain things that I'm doing right now because I'd have the opportunity to be in front of a new audience all the time. The money, I'm assuming, would be really good. And my sanity, though, not so much. And would the return on investment be great? Possibly, absolutely great. Future value, yes, building credibility, building long-term viability. Personal and professional development, absolutely, that would be phenomenal. Lifestyle, not so much. For me, that might, that might be a great opportunity for you. But for me, the lifestyle of being traveling, now this COVID time, of course, that wouldn't happen. Of course, online is way better right now. But just to give an example of how I would be using this to decipher between what is something that's going to help me multiply, but not just multiply my ROI, not just multiply my future value, but also multiply the sanity and the lifestyle. So that has given me uh, a lot of peace of mind along the way, because um, every time that I'm debating, I'm, oh, I always pass it through this. And of course, for those of you who know me and who know about brand foundation, mission, value, values, um, vision, and uh, X factor and premise, of course, every vital few has to deliver on your brand foundation. But the brand foundation for me, because of the amount of opportunities, were no longer good funnel enough. I had to create uh, a new funnel and my, uh, one of my mentors shared that with me and it's been very valuable for me. So uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing if there's anything in the chat. So if there's anything in the chat, uh, I don't see the chat right now on my screen. So let me know, uh, Roger, if there's any particular question. Um, through this along the way. And of course, you can ask questions uh, at the end of the presentation about absolutely anything here. There's uh, Isabel, there are no questions in the chat. Uh, uh, participants, if you do have a question, type it into the chat and periodically I'll interrupt Isabel Perfect. and pass your questions to her. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so now, now that we have, now that we know the, the difference between vital few and trivial many, and we know that we have so many more trivial manys in our life, and now we have a potential equation to funnel the trivial many to only keep the vital few. Let's actually talk about the next step from this in the pivot and in the mindset of growing versus just surviving through this change. And the next step is to look at what five things can you eliminate from your life or your business right now that are taking your time, are taking some money, are taking skills and energy that are not serving you. 
right? Meaning that are not helping you move the needle forward for yourself or for your clients. Are there redundancies in systems? Are there inconsistencies that need to be um, eliminated? Are there products or services that are no longer relevant? Are there products and services that um, used to work, right, but don't work anymore and need to be obviously either elevated, which we'll talk about in a moment, or clearly eliminated? Because like any closet, at some point a closet gets full. And in order to make room for the new, we need to eliminate what is no longer serving us. And sometimes we think that something is serving us, we think that something is amplifying for clients, but we don't really know that until we really ask and until sometimes we need to remove it to see if it's potent. If I think a product is potent, but if I remove it from my clients and nobody says anything, I was probably the only one thinking it was potent, right? So are there time wasters or worry creators that need to be eliminated from your day to day so that you can have more room to create things that add value? things again that are no longer relevant, it's, it's definitely time to clean up the garage. And often what I do is I say, take all the stuff that you're doubting or that you don't know, keep it out of the garage and then reselect in. Just go, oh, what, what am I gonna wanna put back into the garage? So one thing, that's one thing that you can do to start actually starting the, re, the pivoting idea is what things can you eliminate? The second thing to do is what five things can you amplify? What, what five things are working well right now that you can actually multiply and amplify to help you create more impact and more influence? Things that help you definitely move the needle forward. For example, for us, Build to Rock is a great program and it's a program that has helped hundreds of small business owners. And right now through COVID, we've actually, um, diminished greatly, we've discounted the, the barrier of entry, the price, to allow more small business owners to go through the process. So we've created a, a, a $1 trial, three-week trial, to actually really promote it and to get less of a barrier to entry. That was our way of really imp um, impacting and helping our community. We've also created a mindset mastery where it's, it's added value for our clients. We've created um, a mastermind where every week Margarita and I lead and it's about mindset and it's really helping our, what we teach our clients further implementing more resources for them and more added value for them to actually, to, for us to continue helping them move the needle. It could be free, it could be, the key here is what are the things that you can amplify in your business that would help you help others? The other thing is what three things can you create or innovate that would be super helpful to your clients and prospects? New things, things you've been thinking about doing for a while but never really took, uh, took the time or had a chance. Because honestly, I do believe that being an entrepreneur comes with important responsibilities. You know, one of them is to create products and services that make life better in good times and specifically in bad times. As entrepreneurs, truly, I believe we need to master the art of creating, evolving, and reinventing ourselves all the time, COVID or not. COVID or not, we need to be masters at always looking for creating new sources of cheese. What do your clients and prospect need the most right now? What they needed three months ago, six months ago is no longer possibly valid. What do they need the most right now? What can you offer them that's going to make their life and their business better? How can you offer your genius differently? Sometimes it's not about creating something new. Sometimes it's about delivering the same thing differently. Like we're all, you know, this used to be physically in Vancouver and now we're all on Zoom. That's delivering the same goods in a different way. Uncovering what makes you the first, the best, or the only is super important in good times, huh, even more important in these uh, chaotic changing times. 
um, the process of creation, reinvention, and innovation is actually much easier said than done. You know, there's different questions we need. There's, it involves a lot of pondering. It involves asking clients for what they need, for what they think they need. Um, it, it requires us staying in a state of curiosity and being willing to look at the dark corners, you know, being willing to look and do the work, do the work that's required. It's Isabel. Yeah. Mebs is asking if you could uh, relate this to a case study or an example. Which part of this can, can she specify? I will find Mebs. Hi, Isabel, there are uh, lots of places where it would be nice if you could maybe, based on your experience, uh, talk about some of the things that you may have helped uh, organizations achieve through an example. It, it would just help it uh, explain it explain it a bit better. That's all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So in the creating innovating period right here, about, yeah. about creating and innovating? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we work with a, a courier company right now. And, you know, as you know, courier companies, now this is a product and a service, courier companies, you know, deliver, move goods. So we're looking right now at what other goods people need to move that they did not need to move before. We also look at how long does it take for them to actually get a client to sign in, right? To actually work with them. Shortening that sales cycle is a way to, by creating a loss leader, for example, a loss leader is a, is a, a carrot, an incentive that you may lose a little money on up front. It might not be as profitable for you up front, but it's going to move people from waiting to work with you to actually embarking right away sooner in working with you. So in looking at it under the hood of your business, it's looking at what what you can um what your clients need the most and then double clicking on that and going okay so now we want to we want to deliver something online instead we want to deliver more move the goods from one place to another in a different way tell me give me a couple examples for yourself because i want this to be relevant to you give me a couple of examples of lately things that you've had to shift or create for your company. The person who asked the question. One of the things, one of, one of the things we really found helpful right now is, you know, uh, lots of companies are losing a lot of revenue right now. They're looking at ways where they can cut costs. So what we as a company are doing right now is offering uh, customers an absolutely free, we don't charge them for it, send us your telephone bill for the last three months. Uh, we'll check it out. We'll let you know whether you are using the services, whether you are being built correctly, and what, is, what else can you do in order to reduce that bill. Yeah, so this is a perfect segue, actually, to get to the, the, the next point here, which is, and I'll go back into giving more examples around helpfulness. So what you're doing is you're finding ways to being helpful so that you can put your services and products in front of people, get them to experience what you do. And literally helpfulness right now is truly the new hustle. And I will tell you, help beats hype every single time. So how can, what are the things that you can do to help your clients right now? I have a client right now that is helping with, um, she's a, a leadership coach. And let me tell you that right now, the large organizations that have employees everywhere working virtually when they've never worked virtually, she's actually creating products and services and helpful marketing to really help these leaders regain and reshape their culture within their organization for free so that she can be in front, a foot in the door. So the key here right now is to be more helpful than you've ever been helpful before. Truly, everybody here should have marketing material that is so helpful that people would actually pay for it. 
And the more helpful we are, I remember years and years ago, I think it's in the 2009 crash, there's a pool company, like a swimming pool company, who was literally going down because obviously if you don't have money to put food on the table, you're obviously not gonna have money to buy a pool in your backyard. So what they did is they became the massive resource for all things pool. Questions, basically they had a blog that they answered every single question they've ever had about buying a pool, do, having a pool or not having a pool, which pool to have, salt water, not salt water. They became the most researched, the best resource for pool in the world when they were just uh, in their province or um, these were in the States, but in the state, in, the, in a state, and now they became the fastest growing pool company in the world. Why? Because they were helpful. They found ways to help for free, help for fees. So creating masterminds, groups for free to, el to help your clients, doing assessments to get your foot in the door and really help your clients see where their blind spots might be. Um, as the example that I gave a second ago, which was uh, around the, the helpfulness is the new hustle, is you know what are essential services that people need that you can cater to or help with? So the key here is to find ways to be the most helpful possible for free and for less money than you would normally, and to have incentives in front of people that are so helpful that the incentive outweighs, because it's all about the positioning. And I think earlier, who was it that said, um, I think it was Brenda. Yeah, in person versus online, right? And so finding ways to communicate the benefits because people will continue to buy when the benefits outweigh the, the expense or the investment. So waiting to get your help is not helpful to anybody right now. Finding ways to incentivize your clients to take action now, even though it's telling, it's having them do a way, we have a retreat center here. I don't lead retreats right now, but ultimately I lead retreats online. Is it as potent and as amazing as being here at Trailblazers at the retreat center? No, it's not the same. Does it beat, doing it online, does it beat waiting months and months to actually do the work and look under the hood? Well, yeah, absolutely, right? So is that, was that helpful? Was that Mebs that had, a, had that question? That was, that was absolutely helpful, thank you. That was really good. Awesome, thank you, great. So by being helpful, that's how you can find new cheese, by being helpful. And new cheese, as I said earlier, gets created with more curiosity than fear, right? So you've got to ask better questions, questions that allow you to go deeper, that allow you to think further than this particular minute. Now, the, the, the courier company, we're looking under the hood with them to actually go, okay, there's opportunities that are really short term because COVID is bringing opportunities that are time sensitive. You know, people cannot go out now. So they need, they still need the goods to come to them. So ways to actually help in the next week versus ways to help versus my client that's going to help uh, her clients, her team leaders, company leaders, reintegrate people at work and re construct the culture because right now a bomb went off and you know if there's people everywhere and there's tasks everywhere and honing this back is going to be a big challenge and leaders have so many things to do they can't do that and this and that at the same time so it'll be very interesting for her to add her products and services and new ways of helping them helping people live but online helping them through groups, helping the CEO. There's different ways that she's promoting and positioning the new offers. And sometimes it's, she does the same thing. She's still gonna coach, but it's sometimes it's the positioning of it 
Before COVID, she was helping teams be more efficient. During COVID, she's helping teams be more efficient while working virtually, and virtually is chaos right now. I take it for granted. I've worked virtually my entire life. So it's, it's easy for me to work virtually, but it's not that way for everybody. So sometimes it's about just repositioning an idea and just calling it something different. Or like right now, she's going to work at reintegration of employees. Her work is not changing, but the way of communicating it is completely different. And it goes from her client saying, yeah, I don't have time for team building right now to holy shit, yes, how are you going to help me reintegrate and regel my team when my team is now all over the place, right? So those are ways to really think about finding new cheese because new cheese is sometimes same cheese, just played it differently, right? Played it differently. So, um, and truly this happens, this needs to happen in any economic climates. Cheese can go out, cheese can go out of style, cheese can leave a plate without COVID, right? And so the key is to always, always be on our toes. And the key is to do the work. When opportunity knocks, who answers? Work. We can't escape really digging in our businesses right now to find new ways and to mainly be in the state of role model, be in a state of, yeah, you know what? I'm going to contribute to the betterment of the situation versus, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to do? Right? So, um, any, any thoughts or questions around what I've talked about before I go into a couple of resources that are, that are going to help in implementing this? Any thoughts, questions, um, when, uh, insights that you've gotten, ideas that you've gotten through this? A couple of shares. Are there any shares that people would like to insights or thoughts? I can't see all the all the hands, so just unmute yourself if you have if you want to share. Yeah, go ahead, Kimberly. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, even that last point was just um, really all about it. It's about not necessarily that you have to recreate or reinvent the wheel, but how are you repackaging your same services to uh, to to uh, potentially your same customer? So with the leadership example, that was, I don't know if this is me echoing in my own ears, but I love the leadership example where before it's about team building, during it's about leading virtual teams, and at the end it's about reintegration. Same product, different package. Perfect. Same product, different package. And I remember without even COVID years ago, I was wanting to take a month off in the summer. And I thought, and I have coaching, monthly coaching clients, right? So I thought, oh, well, I don't want to not serve and impact my clients, but I also want to take a month off. So I created a whole coaching in a box. Every client got a package. The package had two times the same coaching sessions that they would have had with me. They had that time reserved in the calendar. I gave them exercises and a total awesome new journey for them to take. And uh, they took the time, even though I wasn't present, I recorded videos, they had exercises to do, they had to report on their insights. And truly, they actually, all, all of them said, oh my God, that was so much fun. I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see the next month off. So you see, like buying, your, buying yourself some time and shifting and repositioning things doesn't always have to be complicated. And it doesn't have to be in a state of chaos or crisis. It can just be because you need it to be more practical for yourself. You need it to, to be still impactful while removing you in, from the equation, right? So those are examples of, um, of what can be done. Okay, any other insights or questions? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, I find that uh, it's writing things down and documenting is the first step. And I'm very sorry I'm hearing an echo when I talk, but that's, that's the first step is getting it on paper. Uh, because it's really easy to keep it in idea form and it never goes anywhere because we're full of ideas, we're creative, we're entrepreneurs, all of us. 
but it's actually documenting it, writing it down is the first step. And then that becomes the temp, you know, what becomes the step to move forward to build a roadmap. Yeah, absolutely. And things, things in our minds is, is terrible because it takes a lot of room. It creates overwhelm unnecessarily. Our role as entrepreneurs is to be innovative, is to find, we're problem solvers. This is just a deeper problem, but problem nonetheless. And we're problem solvers as entrepreneurs. So, but we can't problem solve if we're coming from fear or frustration or, um, or overwhelm, as you said, by having too many things in the mind, right? Yes, absolutely. Totally, totally, totally. So um, I know that a, a key in, in learning something or in relearning something is to go from common sense to common practice. And um, the key is going to be to implement at least one thing from this presentation tonight, whether it's repackaging something, whether it's just naming something differently. Someone muted me. Uh, there are Facebook ads that work well and Facebook ads that don't work well. And the reason why they don't work well is one word. One word needs to change and then suddenly it'll go well. So sometimes it's not complicated. We just have to think with it in a mind of, hmm, how could I 10x my business while solving problems through COVID? That's a way better question than how can I survive COVID, right? So Great. That's good. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. Um, all right. So let's go back here. I, I want to be on time. So one of the things that I wanted to offer uh, anyone on this, in this meetup is the opportunity to go deeper with one of us here at LeapZone uh, with a 30-minute strategy session to quickly help you, specifically for you, find new sources of cheese, whether it's repositioning something or creating something. Uh, having a conversation, and if you want to have a conversation for free, absolutely free, conversation with, uh, with one of us at LeapZone, the address for that is leapzonestrategies.com slash rise. That is simply a needs assessment. Just going through the needs assessment is going to actually give you some insights. Uh, it's an intelligent needs assessment that gives us quite a bit of information so we can be impactful on our call with you. And so what we'll do is we'll help you identify the single biggest point of leverage for you to be able to boost uh, your impact and your influence uh, with your clients right now uh, during COVID. I, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll step away from this, uh, from this clarity call or strategy call, uh, being able to implement something immediately that's gonna make a difference uh, in your business. And the other possible way of uh, having a leap zone uh, coach help you moving forward is through our Built to Rock program. And the Built to Rock program is 12 week coaching program with eight powerful modules to help you reposition yourself to continue or be uh, the first, the best, or the only during COVID and well, well beyond COVID. Because the ultimate outcome of Built to Rock is to get your business architecture and your brand differentiation um, in a place where it can not only survive COVID, but actually grow through COVID and increase income, impact, influence, and you know, enjoying the journey throughout. So what the Build to Rock program offers is um, help with your brand differentiation and your product and services structure, what possible new products and new structure of delivery of products you could have, to become more indispensable for your clients. You'll get crystal clear about what makes you different, right? What makes you the first, the best, or the only, and learn strategies to serve rather than sell. The key is to serve rather than sell. You'll sell automatically if you serve and if you're our, of, of assistance. Um, and you're gonna get 12 weeks of uh, momentum generating coaching, obviously uh, the eight life-changing uh, training modules, and there's a lot of templates and worksheets that are already all ready for you, things to use that you can implement right away in your business uh, that makes a big difference, cuts the, uh, the time of learning and the implementation time by half. And I know Roger, I know VBN, uh, and through COVID, we've decided that's our way of impacting our community and helping our community is to literally bring the uh, tuition 
from 2,500 to 40 uh, to $497. And that's a during COVID um, to move forward with more gumption and uh, helping you pivot. And uh, the, um, the way to actually access this offer is sleepzonestrategies.com slash find new cheese, find new cheese. I'm in the mood to help people kick COVID's ass. And like many of you on this, on this call tonight, you know, you're all, you're here because you want to make a change. You want to help and impact your clients more. And you want to find ways, especially restaurant, in the restaurant business, I hear you, buddy. You know, I know that they're struggling and it's definitely, uh, they're, they're very lucky, let me put it this way. They're very fortunate to have you in their back, in their back corner, for sure, in their back pocket. So if you're looking for um, creating new cheese and finding new cheese, these are the other ways that you can connect with James, connect with Luciano, connect with me through Leap Zone Strategies, through Facebook, um, I'm fairly prominent online, and of course through the Leap Zone Strategies slash Rise um, for our needs assessment. I think that the one thing that I want to leave everybody here with is that it's a lot simpler than we think when we take a little time to get rid of the trivial many and to really focus on the vital few and to listen to what our clients need and to be even more of value so that we can help them in a time that matters so that um, they can actually get the trust, we can create the trust and the credibility and the assistance through being helpful so that clients can survive and thrive through this and so that we can help. Because as entrepreneurs, we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our community and our clients to be rock stars and to really help them pivot and shift. So I hope that this was of value. And uh, uh, Roger, I'm gonna give you back the mic, but if, if there are questions or, or other, uh, other insights that you would like to share, I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, Isabel, uh, because we're past time, I'm going to thank you on behalf of uh, VBN. I'm going to acknowledge that per usual, uh, you have given us tremendous value and you topped it off. You gave us the cherry on top of the parfait with such an amazing deal from oh, 2,500 down to 500 bucks. Irresistible. Can't go wrong with that. You've got nothing to lose. <laughs> totally right. So I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I'm about 